Hello everybody, this is Chromos08, and I should have gotten these done a little bit earlier, but I didn't feel like recording them at the time. Uh, this is my my thoughts on Fairy Tale episode 110, and just so you know, I've gotten up to episode 124 recorded. I've gotten 14 episodes recorded, and up to episode 112 edited. So I have 12 more episodes to edit. But I am done with a Tenro Island arc. Anyway, as for this episode, I don't want to drag this on any longer than I have to, because you obviously want to hear what I have to say on the episode, otherwise why click on it besides getting the link. Anyway, uh... As for my thoughts on this episode, uh, Natsu essentially proves his point to uh, Dornbolt, oh, aka Mest, that they are not just going to leave and let, you know, the council file the Ethereon on the island while Grimoire Heart's there. Because that's their secret ground, and they're obviously not going to do it. And Mest tries to convince them otherwise to, you know, leave while they can, but they are adamant they are not going to do it. Anyway, uh... Whew, sorry. Uh, Gray actually ends up running into... Or not running into, he ends up finding Old here leaving with Zaref, And he ends up following her because she obviously looks a lot like his master because that's her, that's her daughter. And obviously Gray wants to know what the heck's going on because as far as he knows, her daughter's dead. So obviously he wants to know what's going on. So he ends up following them. And... Uh, the main part, I guess, of this episode... Uh, is... The fight between Meredy, Juvia, and Urza. And we find out that there's apparently a ranking system. And... Urza is number four, like on the like a list of priorities. The higher you're on the priority list, the more they're gonna come after you, essentially. And surprisingly enough, Makarov is not number one, and neither is Gildarts. The person that's number one is Gray. And apparently, Meredith wants to get rid of Gray because he killed Old Hair's mother, and she wants her to be happy. Which I do not think that's actually going to make old here happy. I know it actually will end up making her happy. Or what would make her happy in later episodes. But anyway, this was a stupid mistake Meredy made. At least the voicing. If she had kept her mouth shut and not said anything, she wouldn't have faced the wrath of Juvia. Which she is very scary when she's mad. Especially if you threaten her great. <laughs> Even just talking about doing it. Threatening him in any way. Hurting him. Taking her away, taking him away from her in a romantic way, or worse, trying to kill him, and you've got a very scary water mage on your hands. And yeah, uh, she tells Urza to go; she can handle it, and she actually can handle it. Uh, she goes and fights against Meredy and just about kicks her butt, except until Meredy puts some kind of emotion link or a sens sensory link on her and Gray. Which means that they can obviously feel each other's emotions, their pain, stuff like that. And, well... When Juvia gets hurt, Greg feels it, and he feels the pain. Juvia tries to... Stop Meredy, but... Ends up being too late because Meredy puts the same thing on herself, so all three of them are connected. Which means, if one of the one of the two of them dies, Gray will die as well. Which makes me wonder how Juvia would get herself get the three of them out of this without killing one of them, or rather without killing any of them. Because I think if one of them dies, all three of them will die. From what I understand about it. 
And essentially, Juvio at first, when she first got the thing on her hand, and uh, same for Grey, when it was just the two of them, she was freaking out, thinking that they were, oh, they're bonded in matrimony, and blah, 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 blah. And we were like, no, that's not how it works. Yeah, it ended up being a bad thing. Anyway. <sighs> God dang, I'm tired. Uh, that's about... All I have to say on this episode, but I actually did think of something from the episode where uh, Lucy thinks that Natsu is interested in him, and it kind of supports the whole Lu Natsu-Lucy couple thing. Because in the end, when Natsu tells her what he was wanting her to help him with and all that, she slaps him, or hits him or something, and leaves all mad about it. And it made me wonder why she was mad about it. If she wasn't interested in Natsu at all... Yes, yeah, she would have been annoyed at herself for thinking in that way. But she wouldn't have attacked Natsu because... Well, he didn't do anything wrong. She wouldn't have had any reason to be mad at him. But no, she want, didn't even... Heck! But she freaked out about it. And the thing is, when she was thinking about the possibility of them actually dating, she didn't get all disgusted about it or anything. She was actually okay with the idea of it. Which makes you wonder, does she actually like him at this point? Even though it's possibly hidden at this point. You know, not like at all in the open like Juvia is. <laughs> because, and she actually wanted to get all dolled up for him. In the beginning, because, she, you know, she thought that it was something, you know, like a date. Which, like I said, also supports the idea that maybe she likes him, but isn't really being honest with herself. Because if she didn't, she would have just gone there in her regular clothes, even if it had been a date. And she would have told him that, no, I don't like you that way, if that was actually the case. But, she didn't. Anyway, I was sorry, I didn't need to bring this up, but I thought of it last night, I was like, wait. Because, essentially, if I was even remotely interested in a guy, if I was, you know, obviously not engaged, but if I was actually remotely interested in a guy... And there was a possibility that he liked me back. And we could possibly date. I probably would have had a similar thinking that Lucy had. At the thought of going out with him. I would have been all nervous and flustered and trying to figure out what to do and everything. But yeah, like I said, that kind of supports the idea that maybe she likes him. In a way. If that's actually a canon episode though. If it is, then there's a possibility that maybe she might, you know, fall in love with him. Over the over the the over the course of the show, and I know some of you are hoping for the whole Nalu shipping thing, and I don't know if it actually ends up happening or not, but there's a big possibility that it could happen. Anyway, uh, enough about past episodes. I just wanted to bring that up because I thought of it the other night and I wanted to share it. Anyway, uh. That's about all I have to say is, lesson learned, do not ever, ever, ever threaten Grey in front of Juvia. In any way. Bodily harm or romantic romantic stealing otherwise. Or else you're going to get a, a very angry water mage after you. Anyway, uh, that's about all I have to say on this episode. And I will see everybody next time.